In this video, you'll learn how to set up a very simple movement system for your player. Since we already have a scene set up, we are going to go right ahead to programming. If you wish to get access to these assets, the link will be in the description. We are going to start by making a new script. So in the project tab, left click, then create a C-sharp script called movement and drag and drop it on the player in the hierarchy. Open it in your code editor. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the initial comments and the start function since we're not going to need them. Now let's create some variables at the top of our script. We're going to need a public float called speed and a private int called input x. Now below our update function, let's make a new function called move and pass it in the update function so that it would be called on each frame. In order to get the input from the player, we are going to constantly check if they are pressing the A or D keys on their keyboard. To do that, we have to write if input.getKey in parentheses keycode.a. This will return true anytime the player is holding down the A key and will execute the following command. Input x is equal to minus 1. Then we have to say if that's not the case, if the player is holding down the D key, set the input x to 1. And lastly, if neither of those is the case, set it to 0. Now to actually make the movement happen, we are going to say transform.position is equal to new vector 2 in parentheses transform.position.x plus input x times speed times time.delta time, comma transform.position.y. So in this line, we are creating a vector 2, which is a 2D vector, and we're assigning it to our position. For the x value, which is left and right, we are saying increase our position by input x. So if we are holding down the D key, it'll increase it by 1, and if we're holding down the A key, it'll decrease it by 1. To get control over the speed of the movement, we multiply that value by our speed. And to make it so that we would have the same speed on low and high end devices, we are multiplying the result by time.delta time. Time.delta time is the time between the execution of each frame. So a higher end PC with a significantly higher FPS will have a much lower delta time. Therefore, it's going to have a slower movement on each frame. And because multiplication takes priority over addition, the computer will first calculate this part and then add it to our position. And for the y-axis or up and down, we are keeping the original value. So now if we come back to Unity and start the game, nothing will happen. Because we haven't assigned a value to our speed. And if you don't do that, the computer will automatically give it a value of 0. So select the player and give it a value. And now you see that when you hold the D key, the player will move to the right side and the x value of the position will keep on increasing. And if you hold down the A key, the opposite will happen. Now we encounter a major problem. When we're moving to the left side, we are still looking to the right. That's not ideal. An easy fix to this is to use the flip x option in the sprite renderer. Back to the code, we are going to make a private sprite renderer called the sprite renderer. Now below our variables and above the update function, we are going to make a new method called awake. Awake is a built-in function that is the first to execute when starting a game. So whenever you press start in Unity, the first function that gets called is awake. Inside it, we are going to say a sprite renderer is equal to gameObject.getComponent and inside less than greater than signs, a sprite renderer. And then open and close parentheses and semicolon. So here, we are essentially looking for a sprite renderer component attached to the very game object this script is attached to. And we're assigning it to our sprite renderer variable. So now that we have access to the sprite renderer, inside the if statement that checks if we're holding down the A key, we are going to say sprite renderer.flip x is equal to true, and inside the one for the D key, we're setting it to false. Let's turn the game again, and we can see anytime we move into the left side, the flip x is getting enabled and disabled when we move to the other side. I hope this video was helpful. If you learned something, drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And make sure to share the video to your friends so they can become a golden developer just like you. That being said, see you in the next one.